20 random things to love about FL Studio 12.5. Hi guys, this is John Judd. I'm not saying all these are brand new to FL Studio, but I'm saying you might not know some of them, and you might know some of them. So let's get started. Number one, presets on plugins. The old method of finding presets on plugins was to go to this arrow in the upper left-hand corner of the plugin, and you go hit this, and then you hit preset. It's a little time-consuming to have multiple clicks. I think this right here is genius. The presets are right here. That is a real time saver in terms of workflow. Number two, Fruity Balance. It's been given a new life and now it has a neat interface. It's tiny, but it has a decibel readout, which is beautiful. When on earth am I ever gonna need this? Here's when you'll need it. I don't actually have an example set up. Let's imagine. Let's say we had a string of plugins right here that were in a certain mixer insert and you needed to automate the volume in the middle of let's say slot six. Let's say you had other plugins and then you had slot six and needed to automate the volume right there. And then you had plugins after it. So this is not a master fader volume automation. This isn't sample properties volume automation. This is a fruity balance volume automation. And the old way of doing it, you would take, or this is what I would do. I don't know what you would do, but this is what I would do. I would take parametric EQ2, turn HQ off, and then automate this main volume band. But now FL Studio has a dedicated plugin for that kind of thing. Number three, Fruity Delay 3. Ever since this plugin has been released, I've been obsessed with it. It was almost as if the simplicity of it made it easier to use. Just an example of what we might do. Here's a sound we're working with. That's the naked sound. I'm going to take some of the reverb off of that with transient processor, turn the release all the way down, and it's going to suck the reverb off of it. It's just so we can add some delay to it. So now we're going to add fruity delay three. It's very wet. Might do a little less. You can immediately adjust the tone of the feedback. This tone knob, if you turn it to the left, it's going to make things darker. If you turn it to the right, it's going to make things brighter in terms of the feedback, not the original sound. So here's the original. Now I'm going to start turning it. Sounds like a low pass filter to me. Okay, to the right. That sounds like a high pass filter of some sort. So in this delay on the left, you have delay time increments, delay model. The thing that really attracts my attention is the feedback section and the cutoff knob in particular. In this instance, you have several selections, one of which is a low pass. I usually like to do low passes on it. So low pass will cut out highs. The resonance will add a boost to the spot where the cutoff is cutting off. I'm kind of making the assumption that when you move a knob and it turns red instead of green, we're entering self oscillation or something like that. Sample rate. These are for making things lo-fi. Things got pretty crunchy right there, and you could always add distortion. For me, it seemed like there were infinite possibilities. I've used it like a million times on every track since it came out. 
Number four, Edison. Wow, that's a whole lot of Edison. You gotta love that you can resize these things. My favorite thing about this, it's super simple. Up here in the right corner, if you watch that, it tells you how much time is selected. So it'll tell you the entire length of this particular sample. Pretty simple feature, but I really dig that when you're doing editing, it helps. Number five, type in values. In automation and the mixer as well, you can type in values. Right click, hit T. This will give you a chance to type in a value. Also, just a heads up on this kind of stuff. The keys that are going to help you are C, P, and T. Copy, paste, type in value. So for example, if we hit this particular location and then we hit C, that means it's copied. Go over here, hit P. Beautiful. Let's say this one was all over the place. T. Point two. That's one of my favorite new features. Number six, patcher, specifically control creator within patcher. Every once in a while, I have to make a patcher preset that'll help me get through a certain mixing situation. I don't know if this feature has always been there, but I never noticed it until recently. You hit plus, control creator. Awesome. Let's say you were in love with that particular knob. You go and you hit this little arrow handy thing. You're gonna drop and drag it onto the face of patcher. And there's your knob. Oh, it's tiny. Right click, size 2.5 or whatever you need it to be. That's a simple one, but I like it. Number seven, go over here in your browser. And if you're wondering how to pull up your browser, Alt F8, and you go to scores. FPC drum loops. You could obviously drop these into FPC, but let's say you had another sample library, like I have one loaded up into Direct Wave right now. That's one of my own. Happens to be guitar hits with my fingers. Let's say I was lacking inspiration to write something or play something into FL Studio. This might be the lazy thing to do, but you might run into something cool along the way. So watch this. F7. That'll bring up the piano roll for Direct Wave. And we go over here. I'm just bringing up some random stuff here. No, we don't want polka. World one. Try that. Try number two. Sounds kind of cool. Watch this. I discovered it while I was making this video. If the piano rolls in focus, like my particular sample library, if I want some different sounds, all you have to do is hit shift and an arrow. And it'll move things up a half step or down a half step. So you have this. Okay, fine. That's cool. If the MIDI loops down here are in focus, watch what happens. I'm going to hit shift and arrow after I play a couple, and now it'll be cycling through the menu down there. It depends on what's in focus. If the piano roll for direct wave or whatever it is, is in focus, that will change the half step on which it is based. Or if the MIDI loop over here in the browser is selected, then the shift arrow will push that up and down. Number eight, packs. Go to your browser. Mode audio has drums, all this stuff. And you have tons of content here where you could make a track off of just that. One thing in particular, if you hit instruments and you hit keyboard, these we have hidden some great pianos. All you have to do to get those, you're gonna grab one of these. I'm hitting close grand. I'm gonna route it.
I'm not really a piano player. I'm a guitar player, so uh, I'll spare you the piano playing. You can drag any of these in. I want to say they're sampled by Sound Iron. I could be wrong about that, but I think that's where they're from. They sound beautiful. Number nine, FPC. It's got a new interface. It looks gorgeous. Here's the cool thing about FPC that you may or may not know. It has multiple outs. So if you're ramming all of your drums from FPC into your one mixer and then we're like recording it or something like that, you don't have to do that. You can take each individual sound and route it. So now that symbol is going to number two. That is actually a very cool thing you can do. You can route to multiple places. I was never using this one too much, but I'm gonna start. It's actually really killer. If you didn't know this, for each sound, you can go down to the bottom, hit this little folder icon, and then you can select a different sound. And of course, those sounds inside of FPC can be totally mutilated with everything you have here. Number 10, Stereo Shaper. It's not on yet, but here's the naked sound that we're going to be dealing with. The sound is way to the left and right. Let's say I wanted that sound dead center. And what I'm actually gonna do is I'm taking some of the reverb off with Transient Processor. Kind of deadens the reverb so we can use our own reverb. Then watch what we're gonna do with Stereo Shaper. All of a sudden it's in the middle. Sometimes in mixing, you're going to need this. You might want it right down the center. So in this instance, to make it mono, pulled everything to the detented areas, six decibels right here. And that is going to create a mono source. You're thinking, why didn't you use the stereo width knob in the mixer? Like I could have just merged everything right here. No, because here's the cool thing. If you make it mono right there, then you can put it in a room that has some space. And now with Convolver, 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 however you pronounce it, now you can put it in a room. The sound source is dead center, but what you have is you have a little space because of the reverb. So the original sound. Convolver. Depends on what your mixing needs are, but I think that one's kind of cool. Number 11, sample properties box. Probably a pretty overlooked thing. We have a crash here. Here's what it sounds like. Now, if we go to this wrench icon, this is bringing up some different things that you can change the sound with. For example, let's say we wanted an echo, like delay. Don't even need a plug-in to make a cool sound with that. Arpeggiator, to instantiate the arpeggiator, by the way, you have to hit one of these arrows. And I'm assuming that the arrow here means it's gonna arpeggiate up. This one will go down and this one will go up and down. And the range is octaves. So let's say we had this now. Kind of neat that it's just one sample that's all of a sudden going ballistic. Now, if we go to this envelope area, this is actually kind of neat. The volume, it's like ADSR, but it has more. A-H-D-S-R, and with a delay in front. These are all things to alter those sounds and make them sound neat without any other effects. And I would be remiss without mentioning the stuff over here. You can modulate these things with different waves. Watch this. The amount knob actually brings the wave in. It's moving, but you're not hearing it so much. The speed knob is going to make it so you can really hear it. Actually, if you do it a larger amount,
That'd be a really cool thing to automate. You can just right click it and automate it if you need to. I'm gonna get rid of that for a moment. So that's on the volume. Now mod X, in this instance, we're talking about a low pass filter. So if you instantiate this. So the amount left or right is gonna affect the envelope of the low pass filter. So then once again, could really mess with the sound. You can create some amazing sounds just from one sample pitch. A laser blast sound of some sort. Watch this. some really amazing effects and it's just one sample so i think that's really cool it can spurn on a lot of creativity in particular if you're writing regular music and you're trying to change it in a way that's going to make organic material sound different number 12 playlist chop this is one that's been there for quite a long time and i use it now and again you know a lot of times i'll use gross beat but sometimes i don't get exactly what i'm looking for but if you left click audio clips in the playlist go down to chop and then stutter, whichever stutter you want. Here's the main beat. Well, let's say you didn't want it to be that. Let's say you want it to be mutilated. That was stutter. Once again, you go and you hit chop, and then you hit some kind of stutter. And of course it's been chopped, which is kind of cool. You can take them out and rearrange them if you wanted, put them elsewhere, mute them. Put some muting in the middle of those. It just interacts with you differently than gross beat would. Number 13, control L. In my channel rack, I have four or let's say you had a bunch of items that were all unlinked. None of them were headed to the mixer yet. If you wanted that to happen quickly and not individually, which I believe it was always individual where you had to link them individually. Hit the left click, select which ones you want, watch the mixer, control L. Now they're all in the mixer. That is a time saver right there. Number 14, solo safe. On any of these green dots on the mixer inserts, you can actually create a situation where it is solo safe by hitting shift left click. If you solo something else, that insert will stay on. I love that they made this happen in FL Studio. I had been waiting for it and they made it happen. It makes certain mixing situations a breeze. Number 15, in the mixer, control left click. You can select a whole bunch of inserts. That makes it really handy for grouping and moving faders. And if you did this, control shift, left click, you could select faders that were away from each other. So once again, that was control shift, left click for faders that are away from each other. Number 16, using the control left click, imagine this is going to be our bus. We'll call it bus. Imagine we needed all these tracks routed to that bus. To get this, once again, control left click, select the ones you want, go down to the little arrow down here, right click, route to this track only. Number 17, piano roll markers show up in the playlist. Let's get into the piano roll. If you hit Alt T in the piano roll, just like in the playlist, you can create a marker. Now we have our marker. Now watch over here in the playlist. So now you have an orientation for where your marker is happening to fall. Because sometimes your piano roll patterns need to fall in funny places. So that'll keep your orientation as to where you are in the playlist versus the piano roll. Number 18, piano roll labels. And there's a whole bunch of white keys over there. 
Sometimes it can be a little confusing as to where you are. Even though the half steps in the piano roll are pretty obvious, it might cause some confusion. Or if you just need help, you can add labels. Left click this little arrow icon in the left upper hand corner. Go to View, Key Labels, All Notes. That's a great helper right there. So now visually, it's a little less confusing. Number 19, this is a grouping of things. Hit F11 for your system settings. In the MIDI section, if you have an interface or controller that's having a little trouble, this might be the page to go to. Right here, enable. This is a little green dot. Keep it enabled. You can see I have a M Audio Oxygen 61. If it hadn't been enabled, then your MIDI wouldn't be able to get into FL Studio. Here's a little trick. Go to the audio tab. If your system is having any glitches or issues, your Osseo panel will help you lengthen the buffer. And in addition to that lengthened buffer, let's say you're doing the maximum buffer and you're still having trouble, triple buffer. I believe that does maybe exactly what it says, but that'll help with buffer underruns, i.e. eliminate clicks and pops in your audio. Also under the audio tab, preview mixer track. That's where your metronome will be routed. So if you're getting frustrated by your metronome being on the master channel, that's the way you can route your metronome. I'm kind of assuming your browser samples are also being previewed through that. Under the files tab, let's say there's a section of your computer that you're frustrated. You have samples or sounds on it that you can't seem to get easily in FL Studio or you keep on dragging it from Windows into FL Studio. If you want these particular areas to show up in your browser, go select them and you can select a particular location and then it'll be right in your browser. And of course, Alt F8 would bring up your browser so you can search for what you need. Whenever setting up under your project tab, set up some kind of data folder. That's where all the recorded audio should end up. You can do an auto selection or you can browse if you don't want it to go wherever the auto is going to set it up. Under the info tab, I always write mix notes right here in the comments section. You can select show info on opening and then you have your mix notes right there or even writing notes during the writing process. It usually helps me get through the project. I might even write plugin settings sometimes. Number 20, in the playlist, with the playlist in focus, Alt-P. That brings up all the patterns and audio clips. So patterns are going to be over here under the piano roll looking thing. Audio clips will be right here, and that will be automation clips. Really convenient. And I hope that showed you something you didn't know. Thanks for watching. So why 20 tips? Rumor has it the next FL Studio isn't FL Studio 13, it's FL Studio 20.